I am so happy for Ryan Reynolds. That man is a national treasure and the success of Deadpool is well deserved. Let's not forget though, this is just an addition to a long list of Canadian actors who have already become part of the comic book world. In the massive Marvel Universe, Wasp, Maria Hill, and that bitchy lawyer from Jessica Jones is Canadian. Canadians are your Scott Pilgrims, your Silk Spectres, and both live action Casey Jones is is. Canadians are the voices of two Batmans, about half the X-Men, and occasionally Superman's girlfriend for some reason. We're even your gambits, your green hornets, and your barbed wires. Okay, they can't all be national treasures. I apologize that this movie review is so late, but the fact is I had dental surgery not that long ago, so I didn't really feel like talking on camera. Could have been worse though, I guess they could have inexplicably sewn my mouth shut. But speaking of national treasures, I'm noticing a pattern when it comes to the on-screen romances of one Morena Baccarin. I understand that two isn't necessarily a pattern, but two of her characters have been romantically linked to Nathan Fillion and now Ryan Reynolds, which means she either has a thing for Canadian national treasures, guys who have played the Green Lantern, where she's making her way through the cast of Two Guys, a Girl, in a Pizza Place. <laughs> that reference is more obscure than, well, the other guy in Two Guys, a Girl, in a Pizza Place. That segues nicely into my major point about Deadpool. Could he arguably be the greatest superhero for 21st century audiences? My answer is yes, because he breaks the fourth wall. His meta, self-referential humor really, literally speaks to audiences today. Part of the success of Deadpool, both the character and the film, comes because of timing. We live in a comic book adaptation oversaturation era, and audiences are ready for anything new in the worst kind of way. But before I sing Deadpool's praises, let me squawk out a few bars of criticism first. <clears throat> is Deadpool something new? Absolutely. It is a breath of fresh air in this comic book and even X-Men cinematic world, but that doesn't mean it's not without its own formulaic traps. Most notably, Ed Screen as Ajax is one of the most bland, one-note, and generic supervillains to come along in an X-Men film since Brett Ratner. <laughs> Let's go through the checklist, shall we? Inability to feel pain? Nondescript backstory? Evil for the sake of being evil. Generic British accent. If that's not enough, just remember that this was the guy who left Game of Thrones to do the transporter refueled. But while Screen's English brogue was to be expected, I was happy to see and hear that Colossus was finally Russian. I don't know how many times I've talked about how they Americanize, how they homogenize what is arguably the most globally diverse superhero team when it comes to their adaptation on screen. And finally, they got it right. Granted, they let the Canadian characters stay Canadian, but that's usually because the rest of the world doesn't know the difference between Canadian and American. But we Canadians, we, uh, we know the difference. The kudos continue with Fox's special effects team. It was fantastic to see a 7 foot 5 Colossus, an actual Colossus. That, and the costume design of Negasonic Teenage Warhead and Deadpool was spot on, straight out of the comics. See Fox? Sometimes it's the little things, like don't make Colossus American, or don't give Deadpool Baraka Blades and expect us to swallow it. Swallow it. <laughs> well, that might be another good segue, but no, I won't go there yet. Instead, I'll go back and talk about the small things, because as a huge X fan in every way, it was the small choices that the filmmakers made that really frustrated me about this film. Number one, the catch of having an actual 7 foot 5 Colossus is we never see Piotr. We always see him in his metal form, and that includes sitting in the back of a tiny little cab and even eating cereal. I get it, they didn't cast a human version, but you know what, it was a little lazy. What's also a little lazy is that filmmakers originally wanted to include X-Force staple Cannonball, an amazing character, but instead they used Negasonic Teenage Warhead because they basically liked her character's name better. On top of that, they gave her Cannonball's powers. In the comics, she's simply a precog and a telepath. So if you're going to do that, just use Cannonball and stick to actual characters from the comic book. You know, that's the same kind of Negasonic teenage bull yeah. that they pulled in the first Wolverine movie. This is not Heather Hudson. This is Heather Hudson, the Vindicator, and a very important part of Alpha Flight. Stop Sticky dick in my with characters and don't with Canada. Okay, now seems like a good time to segue into the language, violence, and sexuality of this film. It is a hard R, but let me tell you, 
It is perfect for Deadpool. Sometimes you just need an R-rated comic book film. It was needed for Blade, it was needed for Watchmen, and you better believe it's needed for Deadpool. But parents, please, as an educator, even one that occasionally swears on the internet, I'm begging of you, do not take your kids to see this movie. That's because in a lot of ways it is not your typical comic book movie, but man is it perfect for a Deadpool adaptation. It's not a perfect film. As I said, it does fall back on a formula once in a while, and people who don't know the character of Deadpool can easily see this film as annoying and abrasive. But those of us who do know Deadpool, it is definitely an earn it. Poll question, who is your favorite Canadian actor in science fiction or comic book films? As always, leave your answers in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe to Real School, follow me on Twitter, and of course, if you get anything out of Real School, you can always give a little back. Just click the link, and you can become part of my Patreon team. But until next time, school's out. Yeah.